hello a very good day to you my name is sister temi tayo and i'm here once again to share the open heavens daily devotional with you now the open heavens daily devotional that i'm sharing is this one that is compiled by the general overseer of the redeemed christian church of god pastor ea adeboye now if you're visiting my channel for the very first time or if you know me personally you may be asking sister tayo why are you sharing this particular daily devotional? Why not another one? Well, the reason I'm sharing this particular daily devotional is that as I prepare to enter into the year 2020, the Spirit of God instructed me to begin to share this particular daily devotional on YouTube to be very specific. And I was able to start that assignment in the month of June 2020. And that's why I'm sharing. I shared the devotional also, not only in the month of June 2020, but in August, October and December 2020. And in this year, 2021, I resumed sharing in the months of March, in May. I'm sharing for July now, and I'm going to share in subsequent months of 2021 by the grace of God. Amen. Now, how did I get to know Pastor E.A. Adeboye? Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, many, many years ago, when I was in the University of Lagos in Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor Adeboye's style of teaching is that he'll give you a few scriptures to read, he'll give you a memory verse, and when you combine those two pieces of scripture, you it helps you to understand the body of the text and what the Spirit of God is saying to us as individuals and as the body of Christ and to the world in general. At such a time as this, in this particular middle of the year prophetic season, as we call it. Amen. And um, today's today's the title of today's daily devotional is Abide in Christ. Today is Monday july the 19th and it's abide in christ and this is a very important topic and our scriptural reading is taken from the book of john chapter 15 verses 4 to 8 and that's just five verses john chapter 15 verses 4 to 8 now if you read the book of john chapter 15 you'll find out that everything in that chapter is in red meaning that all the words of that chapter were spoken by the lord jesus christ Amen. So, you know, this was not a prophet speaking. This is God speaking to us, God the Son speaking to us. And uh, today I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version. Sometimes I do read from the, modern, from the modern translations, but this is fairly easy to understand. Amen. And Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Amen. So many of us have heard this uh, reading before. Jesus Christ was saying that we must remain in him. He said, um, another word for abide is remain in me and I in you. Um, or stay joined to me. You know, that's what Jesus Christ was saying, that we must stay joined to him. Hallelujah. Abide in me, stay joined to me, remain in me, live in me, and I in you and the memory verse is taken from the same verse abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me so the other day there were strong winds in london and you know it broke one of the branches of the tree it broke it in such a way that the branch was still connected to the trunk of the tree you know, and it remained green for a long time, you know, because it wasn't completely broken off. It remained green for a long time. But after a while, it started turning yellow. So that's what Jesus was saying, that we should remain in him, abide in me and I in you. So he's saying that the branch, for the branch to survive, it needs to stay connected to the vine. And Jesus is that vine. So for us to survive as Christians, we must remain in Christ. And that is more than going to church. It's talking about a relationship, a koinonia, a communication with the Lord Jesus Christ and His Spirit and the Word on a daily basis. Amen. And the uh, pastor says in the first paragraph that the meaning of the name Emmanuel is not real to many so-called Christians, to many so-called children of God, because they are not abiding in Christ. Therefore, they are caught in many horrible things in the course of their daily activities. 
this scripture reveals our part in the covenant of God being our present help in times of need as Psalm 46 verse 1. We must remember that the Almighty God is forever faithful. Though the world may deny him, he cannot deny himself. Though the whole world may be unfaithful, he remains faithful to his word in the lives of his children. You know, the Bible says that God will not deny himself. He's faithful and good and kind. He will cause his son to shine upon the good and the evil and his rain to fall upon the good and the bad. You know, he will not deny himself. He's our ever present help in time of trouble. Whether you have been abiding in him or not, or you have not even communicated with him, he's still your very present help in, in time of trouble. So when you call him, even though you have not been, you've not been praying, you've not been you know, waking up to worship the Lord or to study your Bible, when you call him, because he cannot deny himself, he will answer. But, you know, Emmanuel means that God is with us, you know, and we must, you must abide in Christ, you know. Therefore, for fishes to survive, they must remain connected to the water from wherein they were created. For Christ, that's for fishes, you know, for birds of the air, they need, they, 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 they were, you know, the air, they, they came from the air the uh, plants came from the ground they need to remain connected to the ground we christians were born of god for us to survive we must remain connected to the word of god and that's why jesus christ said you shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god so we must remain in the vine we must remain in jesus christ we must remain in the word of god if we are to survive because without him as a christian you can do nothing what is our part in this bargain, Pastor says? We must abide in him, living holy because he is holy. You know, we should never take a break from living holy. It is important for all children of God who want to enjoy the presence of Emmanuel to abide in him so that he will in turn abide in them. Okay, so Pastor is saying that our part, as for me to abide in Christ, what, what role do I play? He's saying that I must live holy. Hallelujah. That means I must not touch the unclean thing. I must come out from amongst them and be, be separate. Because I've now said I'm a Christian. I must not live like I'm in the world or behave like the world. I am different. I'm, you know, I'm different. I'm born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the seed incorruptible. So I must behave like a Christian and not do what other people are doing. I must remain holy and remain in the Lord. And that's how you remain holy, by remaining connected to the Holy Spirit. Pastor then says, how can we abide in God? Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Pastor says, we must fear God and keep his commandments. We must fear God. Some people don't fear God, you know. Uh, <laughs> because um, I think he, the Bible says, some people say that uh, the Almighty does not see, does not know. You know, that's not true. God sees and he knows. So be very careful. Fear God, you know. And keep his commandments many many people today are taking the grace of god for granted teaching that we can live in sin and grace will still abound as uh, abound as per romans 6 1. mischievously they argue that we are in the dispensation of grace and thus can do whatever we like they seem to be saying let us commit sin the more so that we may make maximum use of god's abundant grace they claim to believe in god Yet do not see him as the consuming fire in Hebrews 12, 29. <laughs> the Bible says, do we not continue in sin that grace may abound? And Paul said, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. How can I, who is dead to sin, continue daring? Don't take, um, <laughs> that would be foolish, that would be dangerous. God is a consuming fire. He's not a joker, you know. <laughs> don't uh, don't think that God, God is joking. The grace that he gave us... Um, is, is not a license for us to sin. Mm -hmm. The grace of God is not a license. God does not put a stamp of acceptability on your rascality. God is still a consuming fire. So don't 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 uh, play the fool by thinking that you can continue in sin, expecting grace to abound. That's not why God gave us grace. Constantly being in the presence of God right, attracts multiple blessings. One of these is the opportunity to pray and receive instant answers to our prayer. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples in John 15 verses 7 to 8. You know, and uh, you know, sometimes it, it, we live in a real world, you know, um, 
a, maybe if you're a mother you have three children you know you you wake up very early in the morning get their school uniform ready you also need to go to work you know maybe it takes you two hours and a half hours to you're going to drop the children off in school then drive two and a half hours to get to work work and then leave work go and pick up the kids dad cook market everything by the time you get home you quickly put the clothes in the washing machine or you're the dad you know and you walk very far you know so you get into the traffic maybe you're driving or uh, you know it, it, it life is busy but <laughs> we must make time and there's time for the word of god you must find a way you know in which you can fellowship with the holy spirit irrespective of your busy day or life will become stressful because you just find that day in day out and that's why you know when we go to church the bible says uh, they go from strength to strength every one of them that appears before god in zion you come to church you know fellowship women's fellowship men's fellowship you know and as you get there your brethren are praying and you also are praying you know you know the spirit of prayer catches up you must not forsake to the gathering together with the, of the saints that's one way of abiding in christ and that's one way which you can catch the fire and draw strength from the spirit of god to abide in christ amen what if we fail to abide in christ god forbid pastor says because it carries terrible consequences jesus christ our lord said in john 15 6 that if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Abiding in Christ is the ticket to peace and prosperity on earth as well as eternity with God. Therefore, let us abide in him because he is willing to grant us everlasting life. We must make time for God during your lunch time, you know, take out 15 minutes to pray in the Holy Spirit to, you know, to just sing a, a praise song you know you need in early in the morning you must and then you commit your day into the, and say god help me and cast your cares and your burdens upon him but you must abide in christ you must study the word of god you must make time for god god first the bible says we must seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and as you do that as you start the power of the holy spirit catches you amen you start praying maybe in the middle of the night you start to pray and you are so tired you know i experience this all the time start praying as you start praying within the next three minutes the spirit of god catches you and you keep pressing into the will of god by the power of the holy spirit because it's not by power or by might and god knows that amen i wrote here family altar so important amen you know 30 minutes in the morning daddy and mommy leading praise and worship with the children there and that is a source of strength in the morning and we are teaching and uh, you know laying a, found a foundation for the future generation on how to serve god family altars are so important many of us grew up in christian's homes where we had family altars and the memories remain with us amen so you know ask god for grace early in the morning five o'clock come together and for the next 30 minutes pray read the bible and commit your day into the hands of god and jump start your your day with that now the prayer point is father please help me to abide in you in the mighty name of jesus let's say, say this after me father please help me to abide in you in the mighty name of jesus let us pray heavenly father in the name of jesus christ we thank you, Almighty God, because you are our strength and our salvation. God is the strength of our heart and our portion forever. Father, we ask for grace to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ all the days of our lives. Help us to abide in your word. Help us to make time to fellowship with your Holy Spirit. Father, we ask for this grace. I ask that you pour out this grace upon every one of us that are listening today. The grace for fellowship, the grace to pray, the grace to labor in prayers and labor in the word of God and labor in doctrine in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, we receive that grace for continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive that grace, we abide in that grace, and we walk in that grace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much for taking time to listen to me today. Thank you. God bless you exceedingly. If you're on my channel and you have not subscribed, please, you know, subscribe. Tap the notification bell, very important, so that every time I upload a video, you are aware and drop me a comment. And the Lord bless you exceedingly. And I pray that the grace of God will be with you today as you begin this new week in Jesus' name. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow and God bless you exceedingly.